luxury hotels. They're awesome, but they're even better when they're free. Hey everyone, my name is Matt and I make videos that challenge you to upgrade your mindset, money, and more. So if that sounds like you, why not like this video and click the subscribe button to stick around. Today I'm talking about one of my favorite travel hacks and that's how I book luxury hotels like the Ritz Carlton, the St. Regis, the one I'm staying at right now, two nights in an executive suite somewhere, which sounds pretty good, all for free. And I know that if you watch this entire video, you're going to be able to do it too. I'll share how you can start travel hacking, everything that you need to get started, how you can maximize your points and ultimately travel in luxury. But you're probably watching this thinking I could be lying. So here's the proof. This is a card from a trip that I took last year to the Ritz Carlton Toronto. And you can see that your rate per night is nothing. It's zero. And that's exactly the same thing that I want to see you do. And then I want to see photos of you, your friends, your family on those trips. So how do you start travel hacking? Well, the first step is to join a rewards or loyalty program, and they are everywhere. Stores you shop at, gas, groceries, airlines, hotels, you can probably name a few already. The very first step is to join one, and they're usually free. When it comes to hotel chains, I've given my loyalty to the Marriott Bonvoy program for so many different reasons. They're the biggest hotel chain in the world. They've got such a variety of properties from the, the stays that you just crash in and out one night you're done to the more luxurious days to people that are staying somewhere for months at a time you're going to find it with Marriott they've got a great standard and redeeming the rewards is one of the best in my opinion it's been years since I paid for a hotel once you've joined a rewards program you typically earn a point for every dollar that you spend and then you can redeem those points for free hotels but there are also credit card rewards programs and to be honest that's where the big rewards are so in my opinion there are three things you need in order to do travel hacking right a proven loyalty program a credit card with points multipliers and a solid plan i've used these three things to grow my rewards portfolio to over 700,000 points so it proves that they work. My favorite loyalty program in the US and Canada is the American Express Membership Rewards Program. And that is for so many different reasons that I'm going to demonstrate right now with what I and so many other people think is the best credit card in Canada. This is the American Express Cobalt Card, which is the best credit card in Canada for travel hacking because of the insane points multipliers. It's my personal card. I use it every single time that I possibly can and this is why. You earn five times the points for every dollar that you spend on food and groceries, three times the points on streaming services, two times the points on travel and gas, and one times the point on everything else. So if you're like me and two of your biggest expenses every single year are food and travel, it just makes sense that the points are going to add up quick because I have other credit cards where I only earn one point for every dollar that you spend, whether it's food or something different. So with this card, I get five times the points for the exact same dollar amount. Last year, I spent $26,000 on my MX Cobalt card and I earned 120,000 rewards points, which means that that ratio was 4.6 points per dollar that I spent. Show me a better card than that. I'm home now and there are many other benefits to earning rewards points with credit cards. So if you want to learn more, I've left the link down in the video description below. But I want to give you 16 hard hitting facts that will really help you understand things that I do. I call them hacks that will help your credit card rewards points stack. Number one, sign up for multiple rewards programs, but focus on a few. My favorites are the Marriott Bonvoy program for hotels, Aeroplan for flights, and Amex membership rewards points that I get to choose whether to use it for flights or hotels. Number two, create a system that is easy to use and actually use it. 
Take a look at your spending habits to see if you should actually have a credit card in the first place. Take a look at the stores that you shop at and see what loyalty programs are available to you there. Understand whether those stores actually can take Amex or if you have to have a card that's Visa or MasterCard. And if they do have an existing loyalty program, join that, start using it. And I find it really handy to organize all of my membership cards digitally using your phone. Number three, double dip rewards programs. You should be earning from multiple rewards programs whenever possible. And this is through something I call double dipping. And it's easy for me to illustrate this by talking about when I get my gas, for example. So if I am getting my gas, I try my best, if at all possible, to get it at ESSO. From there, I'm able to earn PC optimum points here in Canada at least, so I'm stacking up my points there, but I'm also paying for my gas with my Amex Cobalt card, so I'm able to get two times the points for every dollar that I spend, and while it's one transaction, I'm earning two different types of loyalty points. Number four, volunteer to pay for things, organize trips, or something else. Be careful here, but if you're someone who is organized and likes to plan trips, volunteer to take that on for your group if you know the people and you know they're going to pay you back. Because if you're traveling with 5, 10, 20 people, and maybe even more than that, and you volunteer to say, hey, I will take on all the planning, what's going to happen is I'll pay for it, you can pay me back and you trust those people, you're able to really stack up the rewards points there. But obviously, make sure you know who you're traveling with and whether or not you can trust them to pay you back. Number five, become an affiliate. I love affiliate marketing, and when it comes to loyalty programs, this is a great way to stack up rewards points really fast. So as an example, with my YouTube channel, I make everything free, right? I tell you how you can book luxury hotels for free, and I don't charge an admission or a membership price to my channel. Now, as a way to support my channel though, sometimes I leave affiliate links down in the video description, like the Amex Cobalt link that's down there. You like the video, you wanna learn how to travel hack yourself, I've shown you the benefits and the value that is in these tips and tricks that I'm sharing with you, so you click that affiliate link and you sign up for a card, I get a commission. I get a set of points and sometimes that's 10, five, 20,000, even up to 40,000 points sometime, which we know those points can stack up quick. And that's actually a really nice hotel room. The one I was in today was 41,000 points as an example. But if you don't have a YouTube channel or an online business, you can always share your affiliate link with friends and family, but just be careful not to do this too much. Don't be too pushy and don't be annoying. Number six, buy gift cards when you can't use credit cards. This is one that I mentioned with caution because it is too risky in my opinion. It's something that I've never done and I never plan on doing because sometimes it leads to your account getting banned. And when that happens, you lose all the points that are in your account. So I don't wanna to touch it. But I want to mention this here in this video because I see it on credit card forums all the time. Again, it's super risky, be very careful, but this is how it works. Let's say there is a store that you can't shop at with the credit card you want to use. Now, you can sometimes go to another store and buy gift cards for that place you normally wouldn't be able to shop at using whatever card you wanna use, and then you can earn points that way. Now, again, it's so risky. I don't want this to be a major piece of this video, but I had to mention it. So I won't do that, but I will do number seven, which is buying gifts for people. And this is a great way to gift experiences, especially when it comes to travel, because I love going into hotels or places that I would like to stay, and I buy a gift card for that place at that place using whatever card I want to use. And then as a result, I can gift a travel experience to someone. And that's one of the best gifts I've been able to give. Number eight, set up auto payments and bills. If you have payments that are coming out of your account every single month, like internet or your cell phone bill, maybe something for your business or anything else, those regular payments can sometimes come out of your checking or savings account. And I'm going to suggest that if you are able to, you should be putting them on your credit card so that you can earn points. And if they're regularly coming out of your account, those points will add up over the long term. Number nine, transfer points. 
this is something that is possible with certain rewards programs and that is why i really like the american express membership rewards program because it allows you to transfer points to partner programs so let's say i have 5000 american express membership rewards points right in the amex portal they're basically worth 5000 points and i could book flights or hotels within that portal or i could transfer them and actually when you do this you get more bang for your buck essentially because in Canada, 5,000 Amex membership rewards points, when you transfer them to Marriott Bonvoy's program, which is an official uh, partner program with them, what happens is now you get an extra bonus of 1,000 for a total of 6,000 Marriott Bonvoy points. So sometimes when you transfer, you can get bonuses and that will give you an additional amount of points. Number 10, book in off-season times. I booked this room for 41,000 Marriott Bonvoy points just because it's in March. And during peak season, which is the summer around here, the room would probably go between 80 to 90,000 points. So just by booking in off season times, you can save an insane amount of points. Number 11, travel to secondary destinations. So if you care more about the experience than a specific location, I'm going to suggest to you that your points might go further if you travel to secondary destinations. And sometimes you can actually have better experiences than you would in a top tourist destination like downtown Times Square, for example. Number 12, search for flexible dates to see redemption schedule. If I don't have to stay somewhere on a specific day, I always make sure that I select the flexible dates when it comes to booking my room because this brings up the entire calendar for the month and it allows me to see where my points can go the furthest. So take a look at this day here, for example. One day it costs 73,000 points the next day it costs 41,000 points for the exact same room just a day apart. I know which one I choose. Number 13, ask for a retention offer. Sometimes calling up and forcing a credit card company's hand by telling them that you're no longer interested in their service or it's too expensive or another reason, it might be to your advantage. And this is something that the conversation gets had, they understand that you're not happy and in order to keep you happy and to ultimately keep you a customer, they might give you a bonus retention offer. Essentially, here's some points, stay with us type thing. This isn't something I've done. I maybe will do this in the future sometime, but I really want to make sure that I don't abuse that because I read of people doing this seemingly every few months or a couple times a year, and it just leaves a sour taste in my mouth because they're working the system and they know that. Number 14, pay your rent with a credit card. This is something I've done for the past few months and I've got a video coming out on this soon, but sometimes you can pay your rent with your credit card, which allows you to earn rewards points on something that you're gonna be paying every single month over the long term, and those rewards points will really add up. That video is coming out soon, so keep an eye out for that on my channel. Number 15, pay taxes with a credit card. Depending on where you live, there are ways to pay your taxes with your credit card, but you need to make sure that you're using an official partnered program with the tax agency wherever you live. So go check that out on the website, see if that's an option, and if it is, you can earn a lot of rewards points by doing so. Number 16, target credit cards with big sign-up bonuses. This is a step that can really be worth it, but it's also probably going to come with a cost because oftentimes the credit cards that have those high reward spending bonuses of like 100,000, 120,000 points or more often come with the high annual fees. But if you do it right, it can be worth it. Travel hacking luxury experiences is something that I've proven you can do. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, drop any questions and comments that you have down below. And why not click the subscribe button if you wanna learn how you can upgrade your mindset, money, and more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.